the most critical part of building a chief is how you mount the lenses. And here is a layout of the lenses from ZMAX. It's critical to get the right tilt between the lenses, which is just the sum of each lens tilt. That comes out to 19.601 degrees. It's also important to get them situated in three-dimensional space. The X direction is the dash lines in and out of the page. Y would move the lens up and down, and Z direction is the optical axis. Note that in this close-up, uh, the two closest edges are not even. And if you get uh, the lenses off in the Y direction, then you'll end up with axial prismatic collar. The first few chiefs that I built, um, the lens holders were just two boards on a double hinge and each lens could be um, tilted individually. They were mounted on another board which was slotted so that I could change the back focal distance and change the alignment. And each uh, individual lens uh, could be adjusted either in X or in Y as shown here. However, I soon realized that there's really no point to having separate adjustment for each lens and there should be a fixed angle between the lenses. So early on, this is what my chief holders look like. A long threaded rod underneath the focuser um, would change the tilt of the lens group. The convex lens could be adjusted in Y and the concave lens could be adjusted in, in X. The angle between the lenses can be adjusted with a knurled nut. When I set the lenses in X and Y with these lens boards, I measured the distance from each lens to the side to make sure they were the same for, for X. For Y, I just kind of eyeballed the position of each lens and made sure it looks like the, the layout in ZMAX. You might think that's a little bit on the crude side, but the proof in the pudding is looking at a star and if the star is red on one side and blue on the other, then the, uh, the Y position's off. And that's called axial prismatic color. And I got pretty good at it. Um, only once did I have to go in and adjust the set screw for the Y to uh, get rid of the, uh, this color. Now since the tilt between the two lenses is fixed and is solely determined by the tilt of the primary, and I'm not going to be changing the tilt of the primary. There was no reason why the lens holders couldn't be a solid wedge like this one shown here. I call this a donut holder. To make this holder, I machined a piece of vinyl tubing that I got from McMaster's to an inside diameter of 1.9 inches, and the outside is about 2.86, I believe. After machining my vinyl tubing, I clamped it to the miter gauge on my table saw and then set the angles on each side and ran it through the table saw. I measured the angles with this digital angle gauge. These things are really cool and uh, highly recommended. I put brass pins on the edges so that the, the group can rotate about its center line. After cutting the wedge on my table saw, the miter gauge is not terribly accurate, so I had to adjust the angles uh, with using my digital gauge. Uh, and sanding them against a sanding disc um, to within uh, uh, the accuracy of the gauge, which is 0.1 degrees, and that's plenty accurate enough. The lenses are held onto the wedge uh, with these little delrin clips that I machined. They have a lip that keeps the lens in place. The length of these clips matches the edge thickness of each lens, and the center hole for the 440 screw is drilled off center so the rotation of the clip allows me to change the centration of each lens. Here's a simple drawing for the wedge and the clips. To make these lens clips, I'm using a piece of 3 8 inch diameter black uh, Delrin rod on my mini lathe. And uh, it's pretty simple. They're pretty simple to make. First, I, um, I have a little dial indicator set up on my lathe, and I dial over, um, let's see, I guess I better zero it out first. <laughs> I'll move it over 
50 thousandths to make the lip. Then I'll start cutting the minor diameter. Once I cut the minor diameter, I'm going to move the cutter over the width of the lens thickness, edge thickness. And for the uh, negative lens, it's 146 thousandths. And for the convex lens, it's 119 thousandths. So I'll move that over. There's 100. Yeah. 100, 119 right there for the convex lens. Then when I cut it off, it'll be the right distance. So here's a lens mounted on the wedge with a clips. And note that you have to rotate the whole pattern 180 degrees from one side to the other because the thin side edge is not thick enough to mount two screws. Shown in this picture here, I'm setting the X centration of each lens. You want to be sure that the distance to the edge of the lens is the same in this direction on both lenses on both sides. Measuring at 90 degrees for the Y direction, you want to be sure that the negative lens is 29 microns longer than the convex lens from the virtual point where the two, two flats intersect. Getting these X and Y centrations correct is probably the most crucial part of building the Chief Telescope. Now, if you're a great machinist and you're good in three-dimensional CAD, you could make a lens holder that has no adjustments, kind of like this one shown here. I've never tried to make a lens holder like this, but then again, I'm not a very good machinist. And if you get this wrong, then you're kind of dead in the water. So there's different ways you can make the lens holders. But one thing for sure, uh, the lens holders have to be able to rotate as a group. And this is because of tolerances. The lens holder fits in a ring that is pressed into the tube. This picture is how I mounted the lens holder in my six inch. It's kind of an exploded diagram. The lens holder fits in a ring that is pressed into the tube. This ring fits tight on the inside diameter. And I also filed a keyway in it so that it stays together as a ring. The lens holder um, rotates freely in this ring, so I need to control the, the position of the ring by using a, an adjustment screw mounted in a wooden block. It's glued on the inside of the tube in front of the lens holder and pushes against the lens holder. Another ring holds a return spring that rotates the ring back and keeps it in contact with the screw so that when I adjust the screw it rotates the lens holder. The secondary is mounted on a wooden wedge with three dabs of uh, silicone glue and that goes into a push-pull arrangement with set screws for adjustment. Note that it's truncated to avoid clipping the incoming light beam and that merges with the profile that's cut out of the tube so that the reflected beam is not vignetted going to the secondary. One advantage of mounting the lens holders in a tube is that the tube can rotate and this can give you another degree of freedom in alignment and it controls orthogonal astigmatism very nicely. What that means is the, the tilt axis of the lenses needs to be perpendicular to the Y plane of the lenses and the mirrors. And if they're not, then the lenses won't completely cancel out the aberrations of the primary. In this table, I started with a nominal chief design. And then I changed different parameters until the streal ratio drops to 0.800, considered barely diffraction limited. But then that uses up the entire budget of tolerance. So you want to be considerably better than, than this tolerance. 
and these are all delta values. And the D column is the compensators used for the tolerance or what you might use to make the system work. For example, you always focus it and um, you might want to change the cell rotation or other things. In general, I think these tolerances are pretty loose, mainly because it's an F12 system. So going down the list, uh, in number one, the lens group can tilt um, 0.11 degrees. In number two, the primary radius I have down is greater than three inches. It's more than that, but that's a very loose tolerance and you don't need more tolerance than that. <laughs> in number three, the secondary flatness is greater than 20 rings. It's actually a lot more than that, but you can't really evaluate irregularity with that many rings of power. In number four, the primary can tilt 0.24 degrees. That's about half the diameter of the moon. But if you use the cell rotation, in number five, the primary tilt could be 0.42 degrees. And that's in the y direction. In the x direction, the tilt needs to be a lot less, 0.095 degrees. In line 7, the radius of the concave lens can be almost an inch, minus 0.95. That's minus. If you, if in the plus direction, it actually gets better. In line 8 and 9, the tilt of the negative lens can be 2.6 degrees, which is a pretty big tolerance. But with cell rotation, it could be even 7 degrees, which is enormous tolerance. In line uh, 10 and 11, the X and Y centration of the negative lens is fairly tight, but the thickness isn't. 0.33 is a huge tolerance, as is the uh, lens-to-lens airspace of greater than one inch, as long as you change the Y centration. For the convex lens in line 14, 15, 16, the uh, radius can be 1.8 inches off which is a big tolerance. Tilt likewise is a 1.9 degree tilt but if you add cell rotation it could be 3.6 degrees. Again another large tolerance. For the convex lens the X and Y centration is similar to the negative lens. Fairly tight but the thickness tolerance of greater than an inch is pretty large. And finally the lens 2 to the image space or the back focal length uh, needs to be within 0.32 inches. But if you rotate the lens group, the tolerance is greater than 2 inches. So you can see that a lot of these tolerances are pretty loose. And one takeaway you can get is that the cell rotation really loosens up a lot of the tolerances. Some ATMs advocate having all the optics fixed, but I think this shows that cell rotation is a huge advantage. And finally, this shows that the manufacturing tolerances for the Newport lenses are more than adequate, except you still need to check them for regularity. Butter Jesus always pleased us, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, rising up from holy water, no pure to be found, last night big Butter Jesus burned to the ground.